Hello everyone and welcome to the Magical Kitchen where I do weekly recipes from this Disneyland cookbook that my mother-in-law gifted to me. Thank you, Teresa. And today we're going to make the Scampi Newport. Doesn't that look delicious? Let's go over the ingredients that I'm gonna use today. I'm gonna use a pound of shrimp, two green bell peppers, a fourth cup of unsalted butter, one bunch of chives, a half cup of diced and peeled tomatoes, one whole shallot, a half of a lemon, some parsley to garnish at the end, eighth cup of white cooking wine, a dash of Worcestershire sauce, and I'm going to pair the scampi Newport with some garlic bread that I'm gonna make out of a French roll. Okay, now that we've gone over all of our ingredients, let's go ahead and get everything prepared. Now let's start by prepping our garlic bread. I'm gonna use some butter, some garlic seasoning, and I've already laid out my parchment paper on my cookie sheet. I figured that way I can pop the bread into the oven as I start getting my shrimp ready. Okay, so I'm going to slice my bread about an inch thick. All right guys, I'm definitely making it bigger than an inch, but I think you guys get the point. Okay, so I'm going to lay this out on my parchment paper. And with a butter knife, I'm going to just apply some butter on both sides of the bread. Okay, now that we've got the tops all buttered up, we're gonna apply some garlic powder over it. We're gonna turn them around and do the same. I think next time I make some garlic bread, I'm going to make sure that my butter is a little bit more soft. I think that's gonna make things a little bit easier. Okay, now we're gonna apply our garlic powder over this side. Now that I've prepped the garlic bread, we're gonna place this into the oven at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, now let's start preparing our dish. I'm gonna start with the tomato. I'm gonna peel and dice until we get a half cup. This is getting very messy. Okay, now that it's peeled, I'm gonna go ahead and start dicing. It's actually a lot easier without the skin to start dicing. I always have such a hard time dicing tomatoes. Let's get our measuring cup. Exactly half of a cup that we need. Next up, we're gonna cut some bell peppers. So I normally cut my bell peppers this way. I know so many people have different ways of cutting the bell peppers. Okay, so we're going to wanna to make sure that we cut them in thin slices. And because we're gonna saute these with the tomatoes, I'm just gonna add them into our bowl. My mom uh, always cooked with bell peppers. We always had fajitas. We were a big pepper family. My dad actually had a tree chili pepper plant by the door and so before dinner he would always go out there and grab a tree chili and he would just take a bite out of them as if it was nothing. And if you guys don't know, tree chili peppers are very, very spicy. <laughs> so we only need about a fourth cup of uh, bell peppers but I like a little extra so this should do it. Next up we're gonna cut up some shallots. So for these shallots we're going to start by peeling the shallots and we're gonna do that by cutting off the ends. It's gonna make it a lot easier for us to just start peeling the outer layers of it. And I don't even think I ever really had shallots until I got older and, or if I did, then I must have just not known <laughs> that I was eating shallots. But shallots are actually in the onion family and sometimes I can't really eat onions because it bothers my stomach 
And I've noticed that the shallots don't do that. So sometimes when a recipe calls for an onion, I like to uh, just substitute it with a shallot. And they're pretty delicious, especially when they are nice and uh, caramelized. So leave in the comments, have you guys ever had shallots or do you guys prefer shallots over onions? And normally they don't make my eyes water or maybe I've just had old shallots, <laughs> but this one is definitely making my eyes water it a little bit. We wanna make sure we mince the shallot for our recipe. So I like to just slice it, especially since I only have this knife right now. And then I just kind of like to rock my knife back and forth on the shallot so it can kind of get them really, really sharp, small little cuts. And again, we're gonna use this whole shallot. And hey, if you have to just close one eye while you do it, that I'm like I'm doing now, do it, you know? Whatever gets the job done. Just make sure you don't cut a finger. <laughs> okay, we're gonna put that to the side and we're gonna work on this one. I like to make little slits and then cut it this way. I actually have a, a little trick. I'm not sure how known it is, but what you're supposed to do is actually stick a shallot or an onion in the freezer for about 15 minutes and it's supposed to not make your eyes water. And also another little trick is onions are really good for you when, oh my gosh. Onions are supposed to really bring out like any like toxins. So for me, I know it works when I'm sick. If I'm getting like a little like cold or my nose is stuffy, I like to um, just cut an onion and place it in a plate and just place it wherever I'm laying down or I'm hanging out. And trust me guys, I know it sounds crazy, but it like clears up my congestion. And I even go as far as putting some slices into my sock. I know it sounds crazy, but it really does get the job done. It like cut down my sick time before into like half the time. But all right, so we are all done with our shallots. Next step, we're going to get our lemon ready. All right, guys, that shallot was very aggressive when it comes to stinging my eyes. I had to take a break because <laughs> it got really bad, but we're going to place this in the same bowl because again, we're gonna saute them together. So let me just scoop it up. I don't think I've had a shallot that strong before, but note taken, I'm definitely gonna throw it in the freezer for 15 minutes every single time now. All right, next step is our lemon. For the lemon, we're gonna start cutting it in half. All right, and then I have this lemon squeezer, which it looks so good if you guys don't have one definitely get one. I'm gonna place it in this bowl. It just does such a good job on taking all of the juice out and the seeds don't go through the little holes, which is a win. All right, and that's all we're gonna use for our lemon. Let's go ahead and start cutting up our chives. Okay, so for our chives, as you see, it's a whole plant. And if you've seen our last vlog, you'll see that we're starting off like an herb little garden. So next time I purchase the chives, I'm definitely going to plant it. But for now, we're just gonna cut off the stems and I'm going to use my shears. If you've seen our other cooking video, you'll see that I use these shears to open up a chicken. Sounds very aggressive, but I swear that's what the recipe called for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make small cuts into our bowl because we're going to cook the lemon juice with the chives all together. So I don't know about you guys, but I really like chives. I think it gives a dish just like such a, a good taste, a little added taste that you didn't know you needed or wanted. Okay. So up next, we're gonna get our white wine ready so we can place it with our other ingredients. Okay, now we're gonna place our last ingredients into the bowl with the lemon and the chives. So first we're gonna start with our white cooking wine. We're gonna want an eighth of a cup. Let's see, okay. Next, we're gonna want just a dash of our Worcestershire sauce. 
that looks a little bit more like a dash, but that's a dash. And then we're going to use a half a teaspoon for our sea salt, which you guys, sea salt is very good for you. They say you should put some in your mouth before you drink some water and it's supposed to really help you uh, keep you hydrated. So that is it for this bowl with the lemon, the um, chives. So we're gonna place that to the side. And next up, we're going to wanna place some garlic into this bowl with the tomatoes, bell peppers, and the shallots. So let's get that ready. I know I didn't mention in the beginning, but this recipe asks for two cloves. I tend to use garlic powder instead of cloves. So for a garlic powder for one clove is gonna be an eighth of a teaspoon. But since we need two, I'm gonna need a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And just sprinkle it on. Next up, we're gonna chop up some parsley. So when our meal's done, our garnish will be nice and ready. So now we're gonna chop up our parsley. I like to cut the stems off and just start chopping it this way. I always make sure to properly clean all of my produce, especially because you don't know if it's, you know, the way it's grown, or if there's some extra dirt on there. You want to make sure everything is properly cleaned because that could definitely not taste good in your food if you start munching on some, uh, some dirt. <laughs> all right, so that should be our enough for our meal. Next up, we're going to start cooking everything together. All right, let's get this magic started. We're going to place our butter onto our pan. And it's asking for a 12 inch sauce, uh, sauce pan or saute pan. So we're gonna make sure we melt it. With these saucepans, I love making like a vegetable melody, like just saute them, it's so good. All right, now that that's nice and melted, we're going to place our shrimp. We're gonna wanna cook the shrimp for about three to four minutes, just for the shrimp to get nice and pink. Make sure I'm not putting in the juices. It's so cool to me how fast shrimp cooks. <laughs> Again, just three to four minutes and then you should be good. So the recipe did call for your shrimp to be clean and de-veined. Uh, and luckily we get our shrimp from ButcherBox. I don't know if you guys uh, are familiar, but they send you uh, just, you know, a box of uh, meat and luckily our shrimp was already clean and already deveined so we just had to open it up make sure it was defrosted and it was ready to go i feel like the butcher box is really helpful or any kind of service that way because you just don't even have to worry about it all you have to worry about is your produce and you're set so i know we've really enjoyed it so i'm going to keep stirring until the shrimp is nice and pink and then we're going to start placing our other ingredients I am a huge fan of shrimp dishes. My sister makes this like shrimp soup. It's so delicious. Unfortunately, she can't have any because she's allergic. So are you guys allergic to like shellfish? Oh, it must be so difficult. My other sister just recently became allergic. It's so odd how that stuff just kind of happens as you get older and you know, hopefully it doesn't happen to me. I'm hoping that just because they, the two of them got it doesn't mean me and my other sisters will get it so because I just love shrimp and I love sushi I love any shellfish it's so good all right just a few more minutes all right now that the shrimp is ready we're going to use a slotted spoon and place it into this other bowl and we're gonna want to make sure that we still have enough butter in our pan because we're going to use that to cook our vegetables oh my gosh these are slippery little suckers and just remember, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I always get nervous that the fish isn't completely cooked, but I just have to remind myself that fish doesn't take very long to cook. So even if it's not insanely bright pink, doesn't mean it's not ready. And it's sizzling like it's definitely ready. Okay, let's see. All right, just two more. Look at that. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. And then we're going to get our bell peppers, tomatoes, garlic, and shallots. We're gonna throw it in there. And we're just gonna saute these for about three to like five minutes. 
We're just gonna wanna make sure that it's softened and all the vegetables are good to go. Also the shallots, I'm sure you guys know, you wanna make sure that they're a little translucent and that the bell peppers are soft, but not too, too soft because they'll still continue to cook. And you know, I actually haven't cooked with tomatoes in a long time because the acid of the tomatoes bothers me, but I've noticed that when I get an organic tomato, it actually doesn't bother my stomach. So I think it's just the way canned tomatoes get shipped and what's in the actual can to preserve it. So we're gonna keep stirring until we're ready to put in our next ingredient. All right, so we're about halfway, and can you guys just see how vibrant the green is in the bell peppers? And it smells so good. It reminds me of when my mom used to make um, some tomato and onion dish with some beef. It smells so delicious. And just saucy, but not overwhelming sauce of a smell. So I'm gonna to continue to stir for about another minute and then I'm going to pour in the white wine mixture. So now that our vegetables are all done, we're gonna pour in our juices. Oh yeah. And then I'm just going to mix it around. Oh yeah, I could just smell that white cooking uh, wine. And then we're going to place our shrimp into the pan and then we're going to just let it simmer for about two minutes all right so as you guys see the juices are really just simmering and infusing the shrimp with all its flavors as well as the bell peppers it's just absorbing all of the juice of the tomato the white wine and the lemon it's looking very scrumptious. I can't wait to taste this with our garlic bread that turned out so great. And again, I think the, the key here is definitely the tomatoes and the shallots combo because it is really just delivering that smell and I can't wait to taste it. All right, so we have one more minute for us to let it simmer and then we're gonna place it back into our bowl and it'll be ready to serve. All right, it's nice and ready. I'm gonna place this in our bowl and then it's, oh, you guys, I cannot wait to taste this. It looks so good. And I just love that I'm gonna pair it up with some garlic bread. So let's get some garnish on there and do our final taste testing. All right, guys, we're gonna do some parsley bay, you know, sprinkle some on top and then it's ready to taste. I'm extremely excited with how this turned out. As you guys can see, I've already placed my breadstick into my bowl but let's take a bite and see if it tastes as good as it looks. So I'm just going to scoop up a shrimp and take a bite. Mmm. I immediately can taste the combination of the butter, the white wine, and even the tomato in that sauce, and it just gives you a delicious punch to your palate. I think this is gonna be my new favorite combo of a dish to make, but I think the true test is gonna be to see if Jared likes it. So let me get him in here and have him take a bite. All right, guys, Jared is here. My love, take a bite. Let's see what you think. All right, I mean, I've been smelling it. It <laughs> smells incredible. So what do you think? I, do I just put a piece of shrimp on here? You just scoop it up and yeah, and then just take a bite. And this is coming from somebody who isn't a super fan of, of seafood, unless it's sushi. So what I'm do you- not. <laughs> So this is a true, true test to see if he likes it. And if he does, I'm gonna be making a mm. lot more of it. You know? Like, like you said, I really don't like seafood very much, but I think the combination of the vegetables and the spices and all that good stuff, it's nice and sharp. I like a sharp taste. Mm -hmm. so this is really good. Yeah, let me let me get a little bit of just of the uh, the inner workings. Approved. It's kind of like a ceviche that I could really uh, get behind. You know what I'm it saying? It is. I like it. That's a good description. And you guys, it was so easy and fun to make. It didn't take very long at all. So I'm going to link the book in my description. So click the link if you guys are interested in picking up the recipe book. You guys keep an eye out tomorrow. I'm going to post up my birthday vlog. I'm very excited. And I will see you guys next week on our Magical Kitchen episode.
拜。